Want the one technique? <laughs> this one lighting technique will change your fucking life. This is the one lighting technique guaranteed to turn her on. Why your other movies look like dog shit. How to light like a pro if you're fat and lazy. This one lighting technique destroyed Roger Deakins. Know the trick to getting out of back taxes and lighting your scene. Those are all the clickbaity titles I could think of for for this uh, this bit here. This is the third vlog entry for the Changelings 90 Day Vlog Marathon, and I was trying to figure out what to talk about today, and I thought I would talk about lighting. I could talk about like the three things to make your movie more cinematic, or at least the three things I've discovered that made that have made my movies more cinematic and more dramatic. I don't want to overhype any one technique. Obviously, filmmaking is a pastiche, an ensemble, a melody, a symphony of techniques. But the one technique that's really helped my lighting, because I'm, I'm, not, a, I'm not a DP, I'm, I mean, I've had some training in film school and whatnot, but it's super limited. But a few months ago, I was asked to shoot a friend short film. It's actually the second installment in a series of films called Snoop. Although I'm getting co-director credit on it, my primary job was to light it. And the reason why I said yes to it is I figured, you know, I wanted a challenge. I had shot most of Milkshake myself and um, I was sort of happy with some of what I was able to capture. I, I think with Milkshake I accomplished most of what I wanted to accomplish with lighting and I just wanted to get to the point where my lighting was looking a bit more natural, more dramatic, with a lot less effort. So I gave my good friend, DP extraordinaire, Bennett Cerf a call. When I asked Bennett if he could recommend any techniques to improve my lighting or to make you know to make it look more dramatic. He had one word to tell me and it was backlight. Backlighting is a technique that I, I hadn't really considered before. You know when I was shooting Milkshake I used the city as a backlight per se because it was all shot at night but I wasn't really thinking consciously on how to use backlight um, to elevate my cinematography. So with that one word and a little bit of a tutorial on how to shoot, uh, how to backlight a car scene, my goal for Snoop became to utilize backlight as much as possible to to attempt to elevate what was effectively a no-budget film so that it looked a little more professional and that it had a bit of drama to it and to make sure that character stood out from the background more. I had forgotten how much you can separate a character from the background using lighting because I, I hadn't, you know, I haven't really lit much uh, for many years. I've mostly been focused on writing and directing for Snoop because we didn't have a lot of money or time, actually no money and only a couple of days to shoot it. I needed to rely on the sun to light almost every single scene. And so I knew that by relying on backlighting or at least, you know, thinking about the backlight more, you know, cognizantly every you know, in every single moment, how, how we're going to position the camera. I always knew that I, I needed to orient the camera so that the sun was behind the actors. And that gave me a nice rim light on the actors. It allowed me to light very quickly because since the sun was the primary source of light, I want to try to avoid a really hard light in the face because it's ugly. You know, by backlighting the actors, I was able to soften the light on their faces so that it wasn't so harsh. I was able to achieve uh, a lot of setups just by merely keeping the sun's position in mind at all times so that I could at least attempt to backlight the the scene. And so I think that overall, you know, I know that there are a lot of other techniques to make your film look much more cinematic. You know, a very easy one is a long lens, right? And, you know, but that really creates separation of background and foreground because of focus, very shallow depth of field. But I think that overall, you know, you can't always lug around a 300 mil lens, but not every scene calls for a super long lens. But with backlighting, I could easily, I could easily reorient the camera and the actors in order to get a dramatic effect. And it didn't, you know, and I could be on a 28 millimeter lens or a 35 or 50 millimeter lens. And so it just became a technique that I learned very quickly. And I think that my cinematography dramatically improved. So if I had to say the one technique that I've learned that everyone could benefit from is to backlight your scene, backlight your actors, to let contrast reign supreme, if you will. Uh, you know, when you backlight something, you create contrast, you create separation. It also creates a, a perspective, like, you know, when I look at a scene that's that's relying mostly on the backlight, it looks like how it would look like if I was standing in the scene in the moment. And it it elevates a sense of realism, I think, about, uh, at least at least for Snoop it did. It, it made things feel 
a little like I was looking in on this scene. And Snoop, when the main character's in the kitchen and we have those nice shafts of light, that that is just the sun with a little canned fog. And that's a, tw I think it's a 28 millimeter lens, Apogee lens. And although it's a wide lens, you can see that the scene looks really dramatic. It's, it's beautiful. You, you're highlighting these streams of light behind the actor. She's mostly in silhouette. And then when she moves to the refrigerator, we have our second lighting set up. The scene is dramatic. It's a little more dynamic. And I would never have thought of that, you know, a few years ago. I probably would have just, I don't know, bounced the light off the ceiling and let, you know, let the scene play out because I just didn't know any better. But by thinking about backlight, the scene looks much more realistic. I feel like if I were to walk into the kitchen at you know, that time of the morning, the kitchen might actually look just like that. So there was a sense of realism about it. It added a perspective to the to the cinematography that I, I never quite considered. I, by backlighting it, it just feels like I'm in the moment. If the, the, the scene just felt like it was in the now. And learning that, I think, has really informed how I want Changelings to feel, uh, to bring it back to Changelings. For Changelings, I want to rely on the backlight. I want to make a scene feel like it's it's happening in the moment, that we're just sort of observing this crazy thing going on. I don't want to make it feel artificial. And I think that by utilizing backlight and uh, allowing you know, a little more chiaroscuro into the scene, it's going to feel more painterly while at the same time feeling realistic. I don't know. Does it make sense? Anyways, that's that's the one technique that I'll, if I could say to anybody that, that they should attempt to do it would be to backlight your scenes, backlight your actors. So anyways, that's it um, for today. This is day three of the 90-day vlog marathon for Changelings. Uh, April 21st is when the crowdfunding begins. And every day here on Distance Signal, I'm trying to uh, upload a vlog so that I can either inform you about something cool like this, you know, a technique that I think is really interesting that's really helped me elevate my cinematography or my filmmaking, or I don't know, maybe we'll talk about some free speech issues. That's that's part of the channel, but more or less, it's 90 days. Uh, we're going to be dissecting every aspect of Changelings as we go forward, and any nugget of wisdom that I've got, I will impart to you. But I just hope that you hang around because you enjoy movies. And I think uh, coming up soon, I'll, I'll be talking about some of my favorite horror movies. The top of that list is John Carpenter's Thing. John Carpenter, personally, I think is one of the most underrated filmmakers ever. Obviously, one of the greatest horror directors ever. But I just love his filmmaking. And I want to talk about a couple of his films because, obviously, uh, there's going to be some influence on Changelings with, with all Mr. Carpenter. Anyways, that's it. Have a great night, YouTubers, and I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching. If you like what I do here, hit that subscribe button, find me on Steam, and support me on Bitbacker. For only $2 a month worth of Bitcoin or Bitcoin Cash, you'll get exclusive content, early access to everything I do, and access to my private Telegram channel, where you can ask me any question you like about the process of making changelings with cryptocurrency. All right, see you there.